Hello everyone, welcome back to another Valorant video. My name is Atchax and today we're going to talk about how to counter the rush. So players in my own games and in the comment section typically talk about how they're feeling overpowered by the rush and when we draw the picture here in just a second, you're going to see exactly why that's the case. So this is a standard 2-1-2 defense for our defenders in blue. And here's the first red line for our attackers. That's one attacker going towards B main. Two arrows towards B main. A third arrow going towards B main. Four. And five. And so at this point, it's probably pretty clear exactly why defenders are feeling overpowered. Because they're extremely outnumbered. And one of the key parts of the rush is how fast it is. Because of the speed, it's going to be hard for the other defenders to rotate in time to help deflect this or to help out their teammates. Oftentimes, the speed is of further use to attackers because a lot of us don't expect an attack so early in the round and we're kind of sleeping and this can catch us off guard. So one of the first things you have to make sure you do is pay attention early in the round, especially against teams that like to rush often. However, although this grouping and this timing can be advantageous, it's simultaneously a disadvantage because look at this map control. Everything in this circle is being held by defenders because the attackers have zero control over any of it. And so if they are deflected, they're going to have to re-clear basically the entire map all the way on the rotation. It'll probably be super slow, and it puts the defenders in a great position. At the same time, that speed that we just talked about can actually be used against the attackers. When you're focused on getting to site quickly, so much more than you are on clearing out corners, as many teams are when they rush, they have a sort of positional misbalance. And this will give you opportunities to hit them in preparation when they're not really ready for it. On the other hand, if you wait to try to counter the rush and try to make your attack as the opponents come out of a choke point, as many teams do, it can go downhill very quickly. That might be a great way to deal with the vast majority of strategies when you're playing a standard defense. But the problem with the rush is that there's just so many people that you're going to get traded out and lose sight control very quickly. And on top of that, many teams use a lot of utility right out the gate. And they're going to be flashing and smoking things off so that they can isolate you and take you out. Now that is actually going to play into one of our strategies for later. So table that for now. But in the meantime, the important takeaway is that trying to fight a rush the way you would any other strategy right here with standard weapons is not a good approach. So instead, we'll have to think about how we can get around it otherwise. The first approach that we're going to talk about, the first counter strategy that hard counters the rush, is called clipping. Let me redraw the map because it's going to be a little bit different. So first, we're going to have what seems like it's mostly a standard 2-1-2, and it is positionally on the sites basically the same. I'm going to draw this red arrow in to represent all five defenders so that it's a little bit cleaner. And then the difference is that one of our blue players is going to be placed a little bit farther up. This is probably a duelist. Think like Jet or Reyna. Because when the attackers come around the corner, you're going to take advantage of that positional misbalance and you're just going to fire a couple of shots with a vandal or an op shot and you're going to try to land a pick. And then you're going to take advantage of those duelist mobility abilities and you're just going to get out of there, right? You're just going to take those one to three shots, maybe five if you want to stretch it, or that op shot and you're just going to fall back before they can get the trade. That's very key. You need to be able to slip out of the attacker's grasp after you get your shots off. And so let's say the attackers decide, you know what, one down, but we really need to commit here because it's going to be hard to rotate out. So they decide to just continue moving forward. Well, that actually plays right into your plan because you fell back to here. And so you just take another one to three shots or an op shot, potentially get an elimination, and then fall back towards sight. 
And so the attackers are now two people down, but they decide, you know what? The show must go on. And so they decide to go Speedway. And here your teammate gets a pick on one of the attackers and slips away to sight. Jumps down onto that sight. And now you're playing like this. Something like this. And then at the same time, your teammate, after seeing that rush, after you called it out over comms, moved over to intercept and gets a pick on speedway as well when they cross. And so now there's only one attacker left and five defenders alive. Now this is a super idealized situation, but the bottom line is that you had four chances to get a pick in this very, very small space. And even if you only get half of them, even if you only get two picks out of those, you're still putting yourself in a very good position to deflect the push or even to just straight up hold the site. And that is an extremely strong counter to the rush if you can pull it off correctly. Our next strategy to hard counter the rush is called burnout. It looks a bit like the standard 2-1-2 defense at first, but instead of positioning players on the site, you're positioning them bordering the site. And when the attackers start to make their approach and they get to this point, instead of trying to pick them off, or trying to stop them, you're just going to say, you know what, you want the site, you can have it. And then you give them the site. Now, why would you do that? Isn't the point of defense to stop the attackers from planting? Well, the reason you would do that is because of that utility usage that we talked about earlier in the video. A lot of teams use a lot of utility right here in order to get out of the gate, and a lot of them are going to be flashing into site and smoking things off stuff like that in order to get onto the site. You can take advantage of teams that heavily feature agents with non-renewable utility, which means they won't get it back later in the round, such as Brimstone with his smokes or Phoenix's flashes, and you can let them use all of their utility, and then when they don't have anything to stop you, you can use that to exploit the window where you have utility and they don't. So while they are taking this site, you're going to be rotating and getting ready for that retake. You're going to probably double up mid-market. You're going to maybe have three in CT. And so from this situation, I'm going to redraw the map to help you better see what this might look like. So as before, two in mid-market and three defenders in CT. Whereas the attackers might be playing standard after plant positioning, something like this. This is where burnout really starts to shine. You can start to use your utility to take site control back in the same way that you would in any other strategy and then start to split off your agents in different directions. So maybe have two people go down this ramp, split off one to watch garage and have two players go speedway. And from here, you can throw this molly right here to force this player out for an easy pick, throw one flash here to eliminate this player on sight, and then use a pincer movement to isolate the last player, and then score yet another easy pick. As this is all going down, maybe the smoke drops, but since you had a player watching and waiting for that garage attacker, they'll probably go down as well. And then all that's left is this one player left in Boathouse against five defenders, which puts you in a really good situation to clean up the round and take the point. Why would the round play out in the defender's favor this easily? Well, a lot of the times the way the utility plays out, let's back it up just a little bit so that you can see, back to maybe this point. Once you throw this molly here, instead of just running out, the player might flash or have a teammate flash instead, and that's going to decay the window in which you can capitalize on that utility. Maybe you flash here, but the opponent's molly, and now you can't get past this point anymore, and that's going to decay the window that you can capitalize on your utility. Burnout is designed to maximize the window and effectiveness of your utility for some easy round wins. 
the third strategy to hard counter the rush is going to look a lot like a 2-1-2 defense. And this time, that's because it is a 2-1-2 defense. This is perhaps the easiest way to block and hard counter the rush, but most players don't do it, even if they know that it exists. So here, the simplest way to block a rush is to simply throw a molly in it. From here, you might want to also smoke it if you have the opportunity. And now the attackers have three options. The first is they can try to work their way back through this territory that they have zero control over and try to rotate, which is going to put you in an excellent position. Their second option is to run through the molly and smoke anyways and try to take sight. Mollies in this game do an incredible amount of damage. More likely than not, you are going to get a lot of frags if they decide to run through this, so that puts you in a very good position as well. The third option the attackers have is to simply wait until the smoke goes away and then try to take the site. If they go for this option, your team should have rotated behind to help with your hold, and hopefully you now have five players on the site defending it, which puts you in a fantastic position to win the round. Essentially, if you can throw a molly, which is not very difficult most of the time, you're going to be able to get a pretty high success rate with that, hopefully. Any of the situations that you are placed in are going to put you in a good position to win the round. And that's what makes this strategy so effective. It's very easy, which means that you're probably going to do it correctly most of the time, and any of the follow-ups to it put you in a good spot. So why would you use the other two strategies over this one? The short answer is because you want to win more rounds. Strategy number three is very powerful, but you're also basically handing a telegraph to the opponents that you know how to shut down the rush, and this is going to de-incentivize them from doing it again. If you think about the way that strategies one and two worked, strategy one had you super close to the opponent and then taking a fight and then dashing away, and strategy number two literally had the attackers planting on the site. And from the attacker perspective, it might seem if one more thing had gone their way, they would have had the round. And that's going to encourage them to do the same thing multiple times, which is going to allow you to capitalize on that and win multiple rounds because you're in complete control with these counter strategies. Now that said, if the opponents start to win back, you're going to want to fall into strategy three simply because you don't want to be doing the same thing over and over again and sort of being caught in the trap that you set for the attackers. So that's really up to you which one you want to use. I'm giving you all three so that you have that choice. Good luck countering the rush. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next video.